take it away and try to uh, make them feel comfortable. So I like to make things, um, it was someone was saying before about liking the interviews because they were very conversational type interviews and that, that's the way I like to um, do interviews in general people. I want to make it um, honest and just just like we're hanging out you know, at a show talking to a fan. I, mean, I guess I'm doing an interview when you know, someone comes up to me at the show and says, you know, they're into the band and start asking me questions. I guess it's kind of an interview in the same way, you know? Okay. First three hands that raise. Go. One. <laughs> anyway, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, give me, uh, basically, I'm going to give the mic to you and you're going to ask uh, a question, John. So after the show with Goat Park, were you the only one that was hanging out after the show and talking to the fans? Because you were the only one I saw. Um, I don't know for sure if I was the only one, but I was, because I remember there was some people who wanted to talk to me and they were trying to kick people out and I was trying to like and tell them. Like, like You were on the stage and I ran up and I was like, you were like talking to a few people and then I ran up and I was like, can I get my picture taken with you? Mm -hmm. And you were like, yeah, sure. And then I like ran off because it seemed like everybody else was making a beeline to wherever they were going to. Well, yeah, that that was uh, that place in Manhattan with the Rouge, you know what I forget yeah. what it was called. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I was at that show. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, that, I, I, sometimes, especially in the bigger cities, they like have a dance night right after the show, so they just want like everybody out now, like immediately, and it really, it really does suck because you you know people come to the show and want to take photos or hang out. I mean, why the heck not? I mean, I've had um, uh, experience in my life where I met, I had a, a friend that was roadieing for uh, Dio on tour, and they ended up giving me backstage passes, and he sat next to me, started talking to me like. You know, just he knew me forever and took photos with me, and um, was very gracious. And and this is a god to me. I mean, god to most people, really. You know, but in the metal scene, but a big inspiration for me as a musician and um, yeah, as a vocalist and stuff. And um, so, you know, you learn from these experiences that it's important to. Uh, engage with people, you know. I mean, yeah, I, I would never uh, put myself in the same league as somebody like, you know, Dio or any any of these big people. But in my own small way, I could still take photos of people, hang out with people, you know, just the dress, whatever, you know. Sometimes you have great conversations with people, you know. I know a lot of times, you know, everyone's yelling at me to, uh, you know, get the fuck back to, you know, you know, get start packing up or do something because I'm hanging out with you know a lot of the people at the show but I'm a metalhead like everybody else is at the show you know I don't just go on stage and do it and be like okay that's my job and it's done no it's like part of the whole experience is hanging out with people hanging out with metalheads because I look at like you know not just an incantation show but any show I go to like these are my kind of people you know people that somehow I relate to and we're here for a reason so you know people want to hang out and talk why the hell not I mean just like Hanging out with any of your friends, you know. And uh, yeah, sorry I didn't get to take the photo with you, but I guess tonight we can take the photo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I did. I did oh, did you get the photo? photo? Yeah, okay. I just didn't get my album signed, so if oh, you can find the poster. That I yeah, can. whatever. That's no problem. I didn't. I yeah. I mean, a lot of times, uh, uh, you know, especially if it's a really busy show, it's just like I end up taking so many pictures that you can't even remember who the hell you took photos with, you know. But it's totally cool. I mean, I, I'm I'm down with it. I mean. You know, I look, I mean, for me, a photo of me is nothing special. And <laughs> also, if someone wants something signed by me, it's nothing special. But I do have those capabilities of taking photos and signing things. So I might as well just do that if it makes other people happy, you know? I mean, that's just, you know, it's, you know, if you can make people happy that way, why not? Well, when I get album signed, I'm more likely to buy more merchandise. I've gone to oh, 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 and, and, and no, every, in, in reality, like I've done this where I've gone up and I'll buy an album and I'll sit, you know, ask the, the artist like, which one is their favorite, you know, which mm -hmm. one is a song that like would really turn me on and I'll be like, can you sign one? And they might say yeah and I'll be like, well, I'll, like I'll buy all of them. 
you know. Well, and if they're able to sign all of them or just one, that's great. But. Well, I've done. I mean, I've done the same thing. You know, when I've, um, you know, you get you get talking to a band. You know, whatever band. I mean, I don't know. Um, there's one time ages ago, probably a. 89 or 90 or something. I think uh, Crozier Conformity was playing at uh, CBGB's, and uh, yeah, there was. I end up getting beat up in the pit for. Uh, I think Ludacris was playing, and I got like beat up in the pit for wearing a DRI shirt at the show, and uh, Lower East Side Skins weren't too happy with that. And um, I ended up talking with uh, you know guys in. Um, COC because they were at the merch booth and stuff like that and I, w I was actually gonna buy some merch from them but um, because my shirt was ripped down the front of it actually gave me the shirt but then <laughs> that kind of gesture of them being nice enough to actually you know give me a shirt because I got beat up in a pit you know made me buy more stuff from them and it, it wasn't necessarily that time but next time I seen them I remember buying a whole bunch of merch from them because I appreciate the fact that they you know they were just nice to me when I wasn't the happiest at that moment, <laughs> you know, getting, um, you know, getting beat up like that at the, at the show, you know. So I, I understand the, the connection between, um, you know, say the supporters of the band and the band is, um, you know, important. It's something I, I look at as an important part of the whole thing because I, I don't know, for me, even though I idolized bands as a kid, I looked at the heavy metal and thrash and death metal thing more like the way, uh, say, old Metallica used to look at it. Like, you know, we're all just fucking dudes, or, you know, chicks, whatever, hanging out, being, you know, it's the stuff we're doing, fucking doing it. And, we're, you know, we're all just brothers and sisters of metal, you know, like Manowar would say, you know. Does anybody else have any questions? Got two more. I got one. Grab the mic, Bob. Grab the mic. Hey, dudes. Hey, John. Hey, What's guys. Up? Thank you for uh, talking here tonight. I got a simple two-part question. First question is for all of you guys. Uh, favorite Black Sabbath album? Favorite Black Sabbath album. My second question is uh, Kiss, the band, with or without the makeup? Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Want to answer first? Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. Yeah. Because um, in my heart, it's the most metal. It's the most. Uh, we won't get it. Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. Um, because we could be here all night on that. Sure. I'm 40 years old. Kiss wasn't a huge part of my upbringing, man. I mean, I appreciate. I guess Kiss with makeup because that's the stuff I know that like the dudes that were a little older than me like would celebrate. Kiss without makeup is. We won't go there either, John. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, for Black Sabbath, it's. It's easy because it's Born Again by Black Sabbath. That's oh. just the best. There's, there's, I mean, I, I I am like the hardcore Black Sabbath fan. I mean, I collect a lot of, um, you know, live recordings and shirts. Just a bunch of stuff. I just, I just love Black Sabbath. It's the core of everything that I do. And, um, yeah, there's no doubt that Born Again is probably the best metal album that ever existed. Um, shocking me with this one. Yeah, I but I mean I love if, if I have. It's one of it's it's the uh, for Sabbath for me I gotta break down because I and if it's an Aussie error I would say it's uh, Sabotage is is my favorite of that uh, Dio era uh, that's that's tough uh, but I have to go with um, Mob Rules I guess. Okay. And if it was Tony Martin, I would say Eternal Idol. My man, perfect. But um, yeah, but the best, Ian Gillen with uh, Black Sabbath. Uh, that's a dream come true. That's the first I've ever gotten for that question, and you know what? I'll I'll remember. <laughs> Great history. Okay, what about the, you, the man? kids thing. Oh, the kids thing. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's even though when I see Kiss the first time, it was without makeup. It's with makeup, and it, that, for that, the best album for me is Hotter Than Hell. Yes. Very good, man. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you for talking. Thank you. The Thanks, one man. thing I, want, I gotta bring up with Kiss, um, so, 
the place that I go to for these big shows is a place called Darien Lake. And uh, I'll never forget as a kid uh, seeing them on like, uh, it was some sort of contraption where they like had yeah, their guitar and they were strapped and they were like on some sort of roller coaster. And, <laughs> and I was like, this dude with like his tongue sticking out. I remember being a kid and being like, what did I just witness? You know what I mean? Like, uh, but anyway, Kiss, yeah, no, you gotta do the makeup. That's what, uh, that's what you gotta do. Um, well, just think of seeing Kiss as a kid in the 70s, like nothing like that existed that was like that mainstream. It was like, what the fuck is it's that? A, it's but a, it was like the coolest thing ever. Like I, like I was a fan, like a huge fan the second I heard like the first song. You know, or watched the first song on TV because the visual is what sold it. You know, I mean, I I might have heard the song, uh, something from them before, but once I seen the visual of them and playing the song, was just like, holy fuck, this is really crazy. I know it's it's timid for now, but at that time, you know, there wasn't that much out there, and uh, you know, I'm like a six, seven year old kid, you know. So I'm gonna throw a little uh, curveball in there and say that the newest record isn't that bad. I'm, when I say new, it was like four years ago, five years ago. Um, Kiss record? No, not Kiss. Black Sabbath. Oh, thirteen? You mean? Yeah. Dude, that was. 10 you know? Years okay. Ago. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Okay, I Dude, guess. Twenty. It came out twenty thirteen. Okay. Well, I guess I'm old. I'm aging. I'm I, aging. I do. I feel the same. Yeah. yeah that, thirteen was was good. Was good. That song, Loner. There's nothing better than just hearing Ozzy, like... It gets to a point when a, when a, a singer or a, a musician, you start to question, like, what are they capable of? And I remember listening to that song. At the time, I was quite young. I'm 23. And, hey, uh, I'm older. <laughs> and, uh, I just turned 24 on Saturday. Well, it's like one of those things where, like, at the time, I was like, oh, New Black Sabbath, and then I played Loner, and I'm like, they still got it. Dad, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, well, Ozzy, especially in the early days, had a really great way of expressing himself vocally, even if his vocals weren't always the best. He always has a passion in there that he, he would get the right passion for the, the, the song. If it was a harder hitting or a, a sad song or something, he, like you hear him sing some of the sad stuff, like you almost feel like he's about to cry or something. But that's great. Maybe you know, he is. That. Maybe a, yes. Changes. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Maybe he is. Um, well, that basically wraps up our uh, commentary or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, basically for the rest of the show we're gonna. This this film is two hours and fifty five minutes. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think the laughing stock about it is um, the amount of time in the editing room that I spent watching it. I'm like re replaying these visions of just like what what's next. I have billions of footage, but anyway, this is a two part watch. Um, basically, I'm gonna play it, um, stay as long as you would you would like. Um, I appreciate you guys coming out, and if you don't watch it till the end. Um, it's on YouTube for free, and uh, yeah, thank you so much. Well, thank you guys for coming out. I think it's a really good thing you guys for coming out, supporting. There's, there's nothing like having actual people there. Like he was saying before, like you get YouTube views, and it's nice to see the number go up, but you know, in front of people is always the, um, the best way to have that human contact. Awesome. Well, I want to wrap this up with this, um, the human contact, what, <laughs> what do you guys think of the film? This, okay, this was my first attempt at filmmaking. Yeah, besides it sucking, how do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm not going to make it easy on you. Hey, it's alright. I, I got a couple weeks no. with you, oh man. <laughs> um, but yeah, what do you guys think? Best movie ever. <laughs> I don't, don't bluff me on that. <laughs> um, it is long. Okay, wait. I, 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 I give you that. Wait, what was your favorite part and least favorite part? Oh. The interviews. 
Which which person? And, and what did they say that? I wasn't sure who 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 was the member. Was there a member of Dahlia speaking? And yes, the drummer. It was Alan. Knew it. Yes. Knew it. Yes. And also the Maryland Death Fest footage. I was pretty stoked on that, partially because I was there and I was just trying to see if I made. Did you a find yourself? Out. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> My sunburnt self was. Lying down half dead under the bridge. I was dodging beer cans. I had the camera and I was like I, I forgot sunscreen that day. It was I was dreading it. It was a party. Next no, time I'm not bringing a the camera. I'm just hanging out. Next time I'm bringing my bandmates, so yeah. Yes. Good. There there are a couple things that I um you know it's it's interesting for me to watch the documentary and I, about death metal, uh, style of music I've been into almost my whole life, and hear all these different perspectives from different um, people from different times or age, age, you know, ages and stuff. And um, yeah, it's it's really crazy because I sometimes sitting there like, no, no, you got it wrong, or, 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 or sometimes like, oh, that's interesting looking at it that way because it's like. It's impossible, well, not impossible, really difficult to understand the time that, um, you know, say we, we started. And it's just a different perception than when you talk to some of the newer bands there, like Gay Creeper or, um, you know. Same with Sugar Bowl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just because. People like myself and uh, what say like you know Barney, uh, Dan Loker, stuff like that. You know we were kind of there was no um, there was absolutely no rules in the really early stages of death metal. It started to slowly become over time, but we're looking at it from pushing forward, and it's weird to hear people playing this kind of music and talking about pushing, you know, pulling back. It's good to go back and uh, learn from your, uh, you learn from the bands beforehand and stuff like that. But when we were doing it, and I, and I could say that for, you know, I'm sure bands like Immolation, Mortician, a lot of our, our friends from back then, we were pushing something further forward and not pulling back. And I, I just remember in, late 90s early 2000s when all these power metal bands came out that were ripping off uh well, I, I looked at it they were just ripping off halloween uh walls of jericho or something like that and uh i didn't understand like why i i, I have the halloween album i don't need to listen to this new band you know bastardize it or whatever but it's actually not that but i you know for me it was just weird to look at that there's just two there's two separate ways of looking at it. You look at it from the beginning up, or looking at it from like the last few years back. It's almost like me looking at Black Sabbath or something like that. I can't. I I was too young to in, in pay, you know know what it was. I only know it from a certain. Well, I, I know it from the whole time, but I look at certain point as back, and other part as I was part of it moving forward with it. I, it's it's just a weird thing to see. Um, it's very contradictory. Like I think that's the best part about the documentary is like you have different. You got yeah. like people that have been around and uh, that made it evolutionary, and then you have the people that are just getting into it. <laughs> yeah, well, people, yeah, because it's like moving forward with it is to me was always the game plan. It was like. I, I, for us, it was like we wanted to create something that was gonna just tell the whole world to fuck off. It's like we want to do it our way. It's our way, and that's it. Everyone could piss off. Uh, it was a it was a really punk rock attitude. Because besides metal, I was also really into a lot of the punk rock stuff and some of the New York hardcore stuff um, for being around here. And it was just a lot of piss and vinegar, um, but also pushing it to like. A higher level and um, you know we 
when you hear people looking back at old school death metal saying this is like this template which is like acceptable it's like uh, you know you, you could say that about some bands i think but there's a lot of bands that we were we were not had no interest in being part of some death metal template that was starting because there was the um, a lot of Roadrunner bands and a lot of the Eric stuff started to become, that was like the coin standard at that time. And it was like, those bands are great, but it was like, fuck you guys, we're doing something different. We play, we're gonna stand out because we're playing our passion, not, um, you know, trying to copy or trying to, you know, like appreciate it. We pre appreciated our influences like Possessed and Celtic Frost and Necrophagia and Early Morbid Angel, all that stuff was, um, part of the mix, but it was like it was important. Like it doesn't sound like any of that stuff because that was us. That was the four of us making that. Or well, the first album was made by so many different people, but it was made by the people in the band as something distinctively us. And it's interesting because with some of the newer bands, that it, I still think they're distinctively themselves. Some of them. Some of them just mimic and it's th their prerogative. I mean, music is, there's no laws in music to do it, but it just sometimes get, catches me a little weird because death metal to me is about like going with no limits. I, it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult thing to explain, but it's a weird controversy I have watching it. But I also respect the fact there's so many different bands out there that put in so many different aspects to, um, you know, change the music because that's only that's the only way it will survive in, in a way is to also be able to change and add stuff maybe that I disagree with but it's not about if I disagree with it because you know my time of being a visionary with it was you know 89 you know now you know 2020 it shouldn't be the same exact thing as what I yeah, I wanted to do back then. I mean, as a band, we haven't changed much, but I'm saying for newer bands, they should be looking forward um, with the proper respect to the, their influences. And another thing I want to say too, real quickly, is that um, the, we were, they were also talking about Dan Loker, you guys were talking about. Love that guy. Yeah, um, he is the... <laughs> Pretty much the perfect example of, I mean, he is, he's a legend, a, like a motherfucker. I mean, um, the, to do the early anthrax stuff, uh, the nuclear assault stuff, and then just say, fuck it, let's do brutal truth. And then the blurring. Yeah. Uh, do you I know. know anything about the blurring? Yeah, I've, I've heard it. Yeah, it's crazy. But, but just a wild black metal band. Anyway. But yeah, no, but anyway, this. The, go ahead. Oh. The, um,. I, I was blown away because when we were probably around 91 when we were playing, um, know, there wasn't a lot of clubs we could play at because we, you know, we were, we were just starting out, but it was Cheers and I at New York and um, Brutal Truth was playing and I was just blown away because this is the freaking dude from Nuclear Assault, like a legend, you know, and he's playing this little club with, you know, it wasn't a huge turn. That was pretty good. I mean, we had 50 people or something, but it was, it was a really small place. And it, I just, at first I was kind of like, is this dude just kind of jumping on the trend or being some kind of, you know, because a lot of, there's a lot of big musicians out there that like to try to act like they're all underground for a street cred or something like that. But once I got to know him, because we, we had to do a lot of shows and tours with him and, I, you know, he really has the passion for it and he does music exactly for the right reasons because he wants to create something that is um, important to him or just some kind of expression of himself. It's not, you know, it's not about the uh, cash grab or the money or the fame or anything. I mean, he had, you know, you know, he could have probably been doing a lot more of nuclear assault if it was all about just getting a paycheck from it or whatever. And um, yeah, I've, I have a mad amount of respect for that dude. Um, and, and like I said, I I did an interview on my on the Rock Fantasy Files, which I sometimes do, and I even brought it up to him that you know I, I kind of 
wasn't sure about yet first, you know, like I thought you were just one of those, because I was a pretty hardcore underground dude, and I, I, you know, I was kind of an elitist back then, I would say, and I was like, who's this, you know, rock star coming into this, acting like he's underground as fuck, but he really was, he, you know, he didn't have to prove it to me, but it just, I just seen it, you know, that way, and I just thought it was, um, I think it's something that needs to be noted, because, you know, so, somebody, of, he deserves a lot more credit, I think, than what he uh, gets, in my personal opinion. He's, he might be, yeah, I mean, and I do think that the best Anthrax sound was Fistful of Metal that he played on, too. I think there's no doubt about it. Is there any other questions that we have for our, before we finish the film? What was that venue in Nyack you mentioned? Oh, uh, it was Cheers in Nyack. Yeah, I don't know if it exists anymore. I, I doubt it. I don't know. It was on the. Because I, 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 I live like right across the bridge right now. I, I go there like. Yeah. It was all the time. I think it, I, it's hard to remember offhand, but I think it was the first exit after the Tappan Zee Bridge over there when you're coming from, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, over yeah. to um, uh, Rockland County. Oh, yeah. And it's like there's like that main drag over there. Uh, it's kind of kind of like their main street that a bunch of bars and a bunch yeah, of yeah. different things. And yeah, cheers. That. That was actually the first show we ever played with Incantation. It was Incantation Mortician. Um, at, it was before I played Mortician. It was just a open mic night over there. And it was a, a real trip because they weren't expecting Mortician or Incantation. They, they didn't know who the hell we were. Nobody really knew except our friends. We brought probably a good 50 to 100 of our friends to the, to the place in Nyack. So... They weren't going to let us play, but all these beer drinkers yeah. are there, so they let us play. We both we only had like three songs, but it was just, um, it, it was total, total madness. And the people at the venue were just like, what the heck is going on here, you know? <laughs> people were just drinking and th thrashing and stage diving and, you know, just going, you know. And they were just expecting somebody to come and play, I don't know, you know, uh, whatever, a free bird or something like that, uh, you know, and it, and instead you hear, it was like the first incantation mortician show, you know, yeah. <laughs> it was a total trip, and um, yeah, that was back when we had Paul Ledney and um, Aragon Mori and Brett Bukowski, and mortician was with Will Romer, um, what was it, Matt Harshner, and uh, Matt Sitcher, rest in peace, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a great talent. I, 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 I haven't been there for a while. Yeah, I, I, I go there all the time. I was actually thinking, like, after this for dinner, I'm going to go to the McDonald's and I <laughs> I was literally thinking that. Got a quick cool. thing to say about the movie, if just since yeah. you asked. Um, just wanted to say, one of my favorite scenes was um, when the camera's far away from Demolish. And, and I love that. <laughs> and, yes. and and you can't hear the conversation, and they don't really know that the camera's there, and all the effects oh, is just playing it out between like gestures. You see him, Auntie putting his hand on the guy's shoulder for a second. And I was gonna say that's just, a, yeah. it's so beautiful because you don't hear them talking, and and uh, there's something about that distance, but still seeing the affection. It was so beautiful, and then. Uh, the opposite of that, there was this one scene where you had the camera really close on someone, like looking through records. Oh yeah. I wondered if did she know that? Oh the yeah. Was I, there, know, I know the exact scene. Did you say like pretend the camera's on <laughs> there, <just> act natural? <laughs> like how'd you pull that off? Like that was also a really intimate scene. Well, but she could have not. She could not have known that the camera wasn't there. Well, um, <laughs> I'm scratching my head to think of an answer to that, but um. Uh, <laughs> 